Hello children, how are you all? Hope all are fine at home? Yes, let me tell you, unlock does not mean the end of the pandemic. Yes, try to understand, unlock does not mean the end of the pandemic. So better be careful and take care of yourself, be safe and be healthy. Precaution is better than cure. So always remember regular washing of your hands, wearing mask and yes, social distance. That's right children. On that note, myself Mr. Rahman Ali working as an English teacher, Government Higher Primary School, Budgumpa, Koppal District, Koppal Taluk. Let me welcome you all to this English class, 8th standard, 3rd language English. And today, I will be discussing about first lesson that is Tenali Rama. Are you all ready children? Yes? That's good. Come on then, take out your textbook, pen, pencil, writing pad and all the writing materials. That's great. So once again, let me welcome you all to this English class, name of the lesson Tenali Rama, class 8th standard, subject 3rd language English for Urdu medium students. Fine. Before going to start my lesson, let me tell you a shloka in order to get the positive energy. Yes. Here goes the shloka like this. If possible children, repeat after me. Will you all? Yes, here is the shloka. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshad Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. It means Guru is the representative of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. He creates, sustains knowledge, and destroys the weeds of ignorance. So, I salute such a Guru. Yes. Atmiya Vidhyarthi Gale Nivu Nimma Jeevana Dalli Yenadaru Sadisabek Indu Kondi Dalli Nimma Munde Vandu Guri Hinde Guru Iddaga Matra Sadhya Vidhyarthi Gale How do? Nimma Munde Vandu Guri Hinde Guru Iddaga Matra Sadhya So, on that note Let me begin my class Lesson number one, Tenali Rama. Before begin my lesson, let me ask you a question. Yes, the question is, do you like stories children? Yes, of course, children like stories very much. Because you might have heard stories from your father, you might have heard stories from your grandmother. Of course, your friends might have told you a number of stories. Am I right? Yes, on that note, let us see the different types of stories. If you just observe the slide, the first one is fairy tale. Yes, in Kannada we say Kalpanika Kathegalu. Children, do you know about the story of Cinderella? Of course, you might be knowing the story of Cinderella. Yes, that is the best example for fairy tales. Right, the second one is folklore. That is Janapada Kathigalu. Namali Tumbane Janapada Kathigalu. That is the second category. And the third one is, if you see there, mythology. Makalani Upurana Kathigalu no Kelirthira. And the next one is epics. That is Mahaka Vegalu. Ramayana Kathigalu. Mahabharata Kathigalu no Kelirthira. Yes. And the next one is very interesting. That is 
adventurous stories do you like adventurous stories children yes of course our children like adventure stories because they are very interesting very thrilling if you just observe the slide you can able to make out see how beautiful this that that's the you know adventure wow you know we generally say like that no yes above all one more is very interesting that is panchatantra stories yes my dear students i hope you all like panchatantra stories because in panchatantra stories we come across the snake used to talk to us the elephant will become close to rabbit and the crocodile will become close to the monkeys above all you know these stories gives us a wonderful message am i right yes that means the stories gives us an immense wonderful and a magnificent message so that we can follow in our life that is what the importance of stories my dear students did you understand that's great if so do you really like stories means shall i tell you a story now or you already to listen to the story yes then here goes the story of the thirsty crow yes i know you are all familiar with the story the thirsty crow but the reason behind telling this particular story is the message yes my dear students just try to see the slide over here let us see the pictures the thirsty crow was in search of water the thirsty crow was in search of water it found a water pot near a well what did it find it found a water pot near a well yes it looked inside the pot for water yes the crow looked inside the pot for water it found some water at the bottom of the pot it picked up some pebbles what did it do it picked up some pebbles and thought of putting them into the pot afterwards when the stones were put into the pot the water level came up yes when the stones were put into the pot the water level slowly came up the crow drank the water sufficiently and flew away happily isn't it interesting yes let us see the complete summary of the uh, story here the clever thirsty crow yes the word you need to observe my dear students the clever yes the clever thirsty crow one day a crow was very thirsty it wandered here and there for some water yes it wandered here and there for some water at last it found a water pot near a well it felt very happy yes it felt very happy and flew near the pot it looked inside it there was only a little water in the pot it tried to drink but could not reach it of course it was a clever crow it thought of a plan it thought of a plan immediately it saw some pebbles around the pot it picked them and put them one by one into the pot the crow saw the water level coming up slowly it drank sufficiently and flew away happily this is the wonderful story about the clever thirsty crow but my dear students here you have to remember what what you are supposed to remember the message yes what is the message think and plan what is that think and plan you will find a way to solve your problems yes my dear students this is what we need to understand from the story because every story will gives us a message and this particular story gives us a message saying that think and plan so that you will find a way to solve your problems you will find a solution for your problems yes we need to remember always before we used to say work hard but now we have to say work smart that means think wisely act smartly 
that is what the need that is what the thing that we need to update my dear students that is a wonderful message of this particular story yes now i request all of you to open page number 1 see the lesson tenali rama let us go to the pre reading activity shall we children are you all ready come on then take out your textbook and see page number 1 let us go to the pre reading activity as i told you that this particular lesson is a wonderful story about yes tenali rama let us see laughter makes everyone happy of course everybody want to laugh and everybody want to be happy and all people laugh but only a few can make others laugh here at this point i just want to tell you my dear students always remember don't laugh at others yes don't laugh at others laugh with others i hope you understood the meaning there really that's good fine so here all people laugh but only a few can make others laugh one such person was thenali rama yes he was a jester in the court of krishna devaraya yes as soon as we uh, see the word krishna devaraya we have to remember vijayanagara kingdom is it it students really yes he was a jester in the court of krishna devaraya Tenali Rama was known for his immense wit and humor. Yes, Tenali Rama was known for his immense knowledge. Above all, he was a man of great sense of humor. His love for humanity and justice made immortal. Many a time, he made Krishna Devaraya realize his mistake without hurting his feelings. See, that is a very interesting thing, my dear students. See many a times Tenali Rama made the king Krishna Devaraya to realize his mistake without hurting his feelings isn't it really good that is what we need to understand we should not hurt others feelings so that is what the quality of Tenali Rama here and there are many stories which tells us about Tenali Rama's cleverness yes Tenali Rama is known for his immense wit that is knowledge and wisdom yes on that note on that note Do you really want to watch a small story about Tenali Rama? Really? You want to watch a story again? A small video about Tenali Rama? Yes then. Here goes the story of Tenali Rama that is Raman and the thieves. Yes. Raman and the thieves raman had a farm house in a village quite small whatever the problems he could solve them all after meeting friends when he returned at night he was shocked by what met his sight he saw two thieves hiding behind a tree his house did not have even a single sentry he had servants but they were far away they had all gone to the temple to pray the thieves had chosen to rob him that night as the chances of their success were very bright raman realized he had to use cunning otherwise he wouldn't be able to save anything He said to his wife in a voice loud and clear, "There has been a spate of thefts, my dear, in a big trunk. Let us pack all our money and gold and throw it down the well, deep in the water, cold. Then we will have no reason to worry. To carry out our plan, come, let us hurry." They pulled out a very big metal box. filled it with pebbles stones and rocks they dropped it into the well very deep and said aloud now, now in, in peace, peace we can sleep the thieves rushed to the well with a lot of hope one climbed down the well using a rope in a hush voice to his comrade he did tell box will be ours but we had to 
drain the well. When Raman's servants returned from the temple, laughingly with them, he went straight to the well. To his servants he said, pointing to the thieves, You must thank them before they take your leave. They have been of great help to you. Look, our fields have been watered by these two. The embarrassed thieves quietly slunk away and swore never again to cross Raman's way. Yes, how was the story children? Isn't it really interesting about the story of Tenali Rama? That is what I told you, he was known for his immense knowledge and also sense of humor. That's great. Now let's go to quickly about the glossary words. Before going to the lesson, let us watch the difficult or glossary words. First one, meek, that means quiet and obedient or gentle. The sentence is, yes sir, she said in a meek voice. Generally, we, uh, we listen to such kind of words. Yes, sir. No, sir. So, that shows how obedient, how gentle, how quiet. So, that is the meaning of the word over there. Second one is conspiracy. Plotting for evil doing. The sentence is the act of planning secretly with other people to do something bad or illegal. So, this particular word is used in the lesson so that you can able to make out what exactly the meaning over there. And the next one is spy. It means a person who collects information secretly. So, that's the meaning. The sentence, he sent her in to spy on his enemies. Next one is agility. That is quickness of motion. The king moved with an agility is the meaning. Next, dagger. If you just observe uh, the slide, there is a small image, the picture over here. Dagger means a short edged stabbing weapon. So, that is the meaning of the word over there. Next one is grave. It means serious. So, grave means serious. Next one is gallows. That is a structure of hanging criminals. Next one is fury. That is extreme anger. And the last one is shudder, that is tremble or shake in fear. So, if you just go through the lesson, you can able to make out where exactly these words have been used and the meanings you can be able to make out. So, now let us go to the first lesson, that is lesson number one, Tenali Rama. Now, all of you look at the textbook and if, if you just observe there, we can, we, we can go through the sentences like this. Yes, the first paragraph goes like this. One day... A stranger came to Tenali Rama's house. Who came to Tenali Rama's house? A stranger. Stranger here means Aparichita Vekti. One day, you Aparichita Vekti Tenali Rama namnik banda. He met Tenali Rama and said, I will stay here for two days and then go away. The stranger said that, I will stay here for two days and then I will go away. So, Tenali Rama readily agreed. Of course, because the stranger has come from far away place, let him stay here for two days and then he will go away. So, he just said, okay, let him stay here and Tenali Rama readily agreed. But, the interesting thing over is over here is, this man, the, this man refers to the stranger, the man who had come and asked Tenali Rama wanted to stay for two days, that man had sent by the king of neighboring kingdom, he wanted to kill King Krishna Devaraya. This is what the interesting thing over here. The stranger who had come for a Tenali Rama's house had been sent by the neighboring king with a conspiracy, with a plan to kill Krishna Devaraya. Now, how could Tenali Rama even suspect such a conspiracy? Yes. How could Tenali Rama even suspect such a conspiracy? The following day, Tenali Rama had to go to his village on some personal work. Yes, Tenali Rama was having some personal work and he wanted to go to his village on his personal work. Now, the stranger got the opportunity. The stranger got the opportunity he had been waiting for. So, he took this opportunity, he wrote a letter. That means, he sent a letter to king saying that 
Tenali Rama's wife is ill and she needs immediate medical help. So this is an opportunity uh, for a stranger to plan and to, yes, what was the plan? The plan was to kill the king. So that is why he wrote a letter to the king saying that Tenali Rama's wife is not feeling well. She needs immediate medical help. Now, the king Krishna Devaraya had a lot of respect for Tenali Rama's family. Of course, he had a great respect for Tenali Rama and he decided himself. He said to himself, let me personally go to see Tenali Rama's wife. If necessary, I will take her to the royal doctor. Royal doctor here refers to Raja Vaidya. Raja Vaidya Nathana Karkon Hoktini. Anta decide Markon Krishna Devaraya Banda. What for? For a special medical treatment. Yes. So now, uh, when, uh, so what happened next? So when Krishna Devaraya came to the house of Tenali Rama, what happened over there? What was the surprise and what was the conspiracy that we'll discuss in the next class? Now let us go to the vocabulary part. Yes, my dear students, the vocabulary is very important under this dictionary work. The two spellings. Yes, spellings are very important. So, on this particular note, I just want to tell you, my dear students, remember always every day, every day, at least write. 10 words from the dictionary and half page handwriting. Will you do this children? Yes. This is what the thing we need to practice in English classes. Yes. Try to understand. Take a dictionary and at least write 10 words from the dictionary and half page handwriting. If you just observe this slide, there is one activity in your textbook in page number I think uh, uh, 2, second page, third page. Yes. Dictionary that is spelling work. In each of the following groups of words, only one word is correctly spelt. That is, right spellings are there. You need to find out the correct spelling. If possible, you can use the dictionary also. Of course, spelling means we need to open the dictionary in order to get the exact spelling and also the meaning. Am I right? Yes. So, on that note, if you just observe the first one, there are three words. S-H-E-L-T-E-R S H A L T A R S H A L L T A R Sound something different now? Yes. Dear students, try to understand the, the, the right spelling of the word. Shelter. Which is the first one? If you just observe the down over here, the first answer S H E L T E R. That is the right word. That is the first word is the right spelling over there. Shelter. Second one. S U D D A N A N S U D D E N S U D D I N. Sudden, we say sudden, suddenly, sometimes we use like that. So, which is the right word? The second word here. S U D D E N is the right spelling. That is what we have to observe. In the third one, another three words are there. F A R G I V E. F O R G I V E. F A R G A V E. See how the difference in the spelling. I think you can able to make out the spelling of the word forgive, right? The first one or the second one or the third one? Which is the right right one? Yes, the second one, F-O-R-G-I-V-E, forgive. That is the right spelling. Am I right? I think you, you can able to under, you are, you know, you are following the uh, points over there? Yes, fine, that's good. Okay, so, uh, try to understand the spellings, my dear students, because it's, it's very important to know uh, how to use the dictionary, especially the usage of dictionary in order to know the spellings. If you see the fourth word, opportunity. O-P-P-O-R-T-U-N-I-T-Y O-P-P-A-R-T-U-N-I-T-Y O-P-P-O-R-T-U-N-I-T-E So, wantedly I just uh, mixed up the spelling, but I want you people to observe the spelling over there. Which is the first one? Which is the, which is the right one? The first word. O P P O R T U N I T Y opportunity avakasha yes my dear students try to understand the spelling over here in the fifth one C O U G H T caught C A U G H T caught C A U G T caught so which is the right word which is the right spelling caught C A U G H T caught yes sixth one is for you people to find out and uh, note down and later on you can just tell the right spelling to your teacher in the school is that is that okay 
Yes, the word is stranger. S T R A N G E R. S T R E N E G E R. S T E N G E R. S T R G N E R. Anyway, I want you people to find out the right spelling of this particular word and note it down, and you can just show it to your teacher later on. Will you do that one? Yes. So for this particular exercise, I just want to repeat once again, my dear students, try to understand every day. Open a dictionary and at least practice five words or ten words from a dictionary and a half page handwriting, so that your vocabulary and your writing will improve a lot. Is that clear? That's good. So now, I just want to introduce a small grammar concept. Being an eighth standard student, you should know about this particular heading that is parts of speech. What is this? Parts of speech. How lovely, na? Parts of speech. If someone will ask you a question, my dear students, can you tell me how many parts of speech are there in English? Of course, you will say there are eight parts of speech are there in English. So this is what the basic thing that you have to remember and you need to know every time. You have to uh, know, keep in your mind every time, my dear students. So under the heading of parts of speech, the first one is noun, pronoun, verb. adverb adjective preposition conjunction and interjection yes this one you have to remember how many parts of speech are there in english there are eight parts of speech are there in english first one is noun second one is pronoun third one is verb even you have to observe the spelling also just now i told you my dear students observe the spelling right Is is it right? N O U N noun, P R O N O U N pronoun, V E R B verb, A D V E R B adverb. See, it's it's a, it's a combination. You can easily remember even the word like this: noun, pronoun, verb, adverb, adjective, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. Hope you have uh, uh, got the words there. Yes, this is something basic you have to remember, my dear students. so because uh, in my next classes uh, i will be discussing about what is noun what is pronoun what are the types of pronoun because in your textbook in page number 4 uh, uh, they have given fill in the blanks with suitable prepositions instead of directly going to the prepositions so i just want you people to understand the different types or the parts of speech you have to know my dear students you have to remember always If someone will ask you a question, can anybody will tell uh, how many parts of speech are there in English? Yes, we know the answer. Like this, you have to say the answer, right? Good. Remember, there are eight parts of speech. Let me re- repeat quickly once again. Repeat after me. Say noun. Yes. Pronoun. Verb. Adverb. Adjective. Preposition. Conjunction. And interjection that's good my dear students so hope you have got the parts of speech now let's move on to the home assignment yes i want you to observe this particular uh, uh, image uh, what you are supposed to do is that complete the following story with the help of a words given in a box so because uh, the beginning of this lesson was by introducing a story because i i told about a story uh, of thirsty crow even we have watched a wonderful video about a story of tenali rama now i want you to do this as an home assignment if you just observe this particular slide you will be understand be able to understand uh, a story about so on so if you just observe that one let me tell you there are some words in the boxes that is foolish foolishness laid women felt hen many x cut knife belly x you know just observe this particular box what you are supposed to do is that if you just if you just see the paragraph everywhere okay for example see the dash women the dash women so the title of the story so if you just go through the paragraph you, you will easily able to understand yes this story is about is about the dash women i hope you are familiar if you just go through this particular line you can able to you know make out very easily see there once there lived a dash in a village she had a dash one day the hen 
dash a golden egg. The dash was very happy. She thought that there would be a dash egg in its belly. She decided to dash open the hen's stomach and get all dash together. So she took a dash and cut the dash and opened it. But alas, there was no more dash in its stomach. The woman dash very sad. She regretted about her dash. So these blanks, these as I said the word dash that means blanks, you are supposed to see those words in the box. So those words you are supposed to fill it and complete the story. This is a wonderful story my dear students because uh, this particular lesson is also speak about the story of a Tenali Rama, right? Like that, I have given a small story in the form of a fill in the blanks. Use these words and fill the blank. Is that clear? Will you all do this one as a home assignment? Is that clear my dear students? Tell me, isn't it really interesting? That's good. So, I want to tell you, don't waste your time. Make use of the available time in a proper way and keep engage yourself in one or other educational activities like reading or writing or listening whatever that is LSRW skills okay so on that note let me conclude with this home assignment thank you thank you so much Yes, sir. Yes, teacher. Yes, ma'am.